his uh, closing remarks about uh, the uh, charging the water. Yeah, with yeah. loud, right? Okay. So he was talking about some psychics in Russia charging the water, so you turn on TV and you see them charging the water. That was a long time ago. I mean, they're not there. We're living in the internet age, and nowadays it's tough because we don't have big names to tackle. They're all now on the internet and became very local, so it's, it's tough. And of course, uh, but there are certain directions that are very popular, and so I'm going to tell you about those. I just would have to make a remark that whenever somebody asks you about like a country or can you tell me like what's going on in Russia, it's always like a burden. Like and then somebody will say, you know, I don't agree with what you're saying. And so this is just my opinion. I think that I'm in a good position to judge what is uh, what is popular there in terms of pseudoscience. But nevertheless, I could be wrong. But anyway, so the biggest thing I will tell you today about that just two things, which are which are very important. So the biggest thing in Russia right now is water. And I think that many of you know how water can be pseudoscience, right? So uh, homeopathy, and not just any homeopathy, homeopathy 2.0, you know, like web 2.0, so that's homeopathy 2.0. So whenever, when everybody now understands that there's no active ingredient in water, then the next logical thing is to say, okay, but water has memory. And so, right, so, uh, in Russia, there's a TV channel that does pseudoscientific movies. They're not just movies, they're blockbusters. They're really well made. You're like, I wish we had scientific movies like that. And so they made two movies about water. And, you know, one of the movies, I really want to tell you the scene from the movie. So, the movie starts with a really beautifully filmed scene. It's like a desert. And many people, like a group, a crowd of people, is walking the desert and they're dying, there's no water anywhere. And they have like these cool shots of older people just falling down into the sand, you know, like the dust, let's say he's dead, no water. And so they're walking, walking, and then somebody uh, in that crowd just uh, looks forward, like, look like that, and his face lifts up, water. And then the next frame shows a shot of a, a beach and sea waves towards that beach. You're like, okay, so they're carrying a lab to get salt out of the water? How unscientific can you get on the first scene of the movie? And so it goes downwards from there, and they show that, uh, like, stories are very colorful about experiments that sort of prove that water does have memory and that it reacts to emotion. And uh, one of the last scenes of the movie, they're showing an Indian river, and uh, uh, children are playing there in the water, but the river is very dirty, and there's like corpses of animals actually like swimming by. And you're like, oh, right, yes, water memory, all right. Should we, should we remember everything, right? Uh, and so those movies were very big, and because everything is local now, what happens is that we sometimes attend local screenings of those movies just to see what's going on. And I went to one of those. And uh, that's where it gets kind of sad because uh, there were many different people there. And there was a woman with a, with a child who was like four or five years old girl. And she was watching that movie and actually writing things down. It was like, wow, and I'm looking at that girl and understand that she's not in a very good position. In fact, who knows, maybe she's not vaccinated because uh, these movies usually, they talk, for example, about water, but they touch upon all the other things like GMO and anti-vaccination stuff. So, uh, so people actually watch that, and homeopathy is pretty big in Russia. Uh, Russia has support of acupuncture in law, so you can be officially an acupuncturist. Homeopathy doesn't have that support. As far as I know, they're trying hard. I don't know if they will succeed. And, but that would be like, so that's, that's ideology, the actual business model. They have a website. You can actually go and see. I think they have an English version. It's newpharma.ru. Maybe they have newpharma.com. Uh, so the, here's what they do. They have uh, virtual drugs. So let's say you, you want aspirin. You download aspirin. So you have to put CD into your CD-ROM if you still have one. And then you have to press the button load and it says loading and you have to wait for 12 minutes. Then you have to take out the CD. Nothing is burned there. But you have to take out the CD. You have to put it on the table and have a glass of water. Put it on the CD and then wait for 30 minutes and drink it, and that's aspirin. <laughs> and so, uh, 
And actually, when I tell this to people, they ask, maybe, does the site actually burn something to see? Is, is there anything going on? And you know that in the web browser, you can look at the source of the page. And so I looked at the source of the page, and I mean, anybody who even had like school programming courses will see that what it does is it has a loop. And it says, until 12 minutes, uh, until, uh, oh, well, until you're within 12 minutes, show the word loading. That's all it does. And, uh, but the website is actually, I think it's very dangerous because it's a killer for a non-skeptical person. In fact, it's difficult to digest even if you're skeptical because it has a whole huge section on science, how science supports this. And half of the articles are genuine. That's real science. Uh, but the thing is that it contains, it has nothing to do with what they're doing, but it has like the word water in it and like something else like charge. Uh, you have to go and actually read it to understand that it's, it has nothing to do with it. And the other half is homeopathy journals. And a person who does, I mean, I don't, like old lady goes onto the website. She won't know. She will just start downloading the drugs. And they, of course, uh, say, well, you don't have, you have to take the real drug as well. But as time goes on, you have to lower the dose. C is a clever, uh, but of course uh, the problem is that uh, I, I mentioned aspirin. They actually have a lot of very serious drugs there. So if actually somebody will really do that, that can be very dangerous, and that that can lead to death in some cases. So this is a big thing, and the other big thing is something that I've uh, investigated and I've seen. I see this in all countries, but somehow in Russia it's right now like very popular. This is like pseudo history plus pseudo linguistics. When they take like words and they start taking them apart and saying that you see this is this way, the, you, like if some words have other words within them, and very often that's just a coincidence. So they use that to argue that that means that history is wrong and you know that country didn't invade that country and that king never existed and Russians are the best, you know, that kind of stuff. And uh, it all, it all uh, about, it's in the society of people who think that you should be closer to nature and that ancient people were wiser and modern science doesn't get it. And so this is very, very, very big. So yeah, so these are the things that we're up against. Of course, we have the background of all the other stuff that everybody else has. Uh, Anti-vaccination, and I have to be very careful saying that, but so far, I don't think it's that bad. For example, as in the United States, it's, people seem to vaccinate at least the usual like child programs. Generally, I, I don't see any big situations where people will deny that. Uh, but the anti-vaccination sentiment is there just like everywhere else. And we'll see if this changes. And religion is on the rise. So, we're still optimistic. <laughs> so, yeah. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, people. Susan asked me if I actually said what I am. I'm the founder of Skeptic Society in Russia, and uh, uh, we started like a year or several months ago, so we're very new. We're not the only ones who do this, but we're the only one who, the only organization that actually does skepticism as opposed to, for example, just science. Or, uh, and we're the ones who go offline, so we have weekly meetings in several cities right now. We're doing a weekly podcast, which is crazy. If you are doing a weekly podcast, you know. And we do some other stuff, and we're planning to do a conference with this year, so we'll see how it goes. Oh, my name! Right! <laughs> my name is Kirill, Kirill Alferov. So, I, I, I was just used that, I have the name here, so I didn't give it a second thought. Thank you, thanks yeah. for Thanks, thanks for having me. There's a downloadable drug cost money, or are they free? Uh, they're free the first month, then you have to pay a subscription fee. <laughs> but you can go and try and sign up for the newsletter. <laughs>